Black Lives Matter. It started as a hashtag in 2012 after 17 year old Trayvon Martin was shot dead by neighborhood watchman George Zimmerman. He killed my boyfriend. He's licensed, he's carried. Since then, iconic moments of police brutality captured on camera <laughs> meant the movement spread across America. But now the Black Lives Matter brand has gone global with marches in Australia, Canada, and around the UK. But why are people here marching? I'm Nesta McGregor. I'm a journalist at BBC Radio One and One Extra. I was born in Jamaica, but my family moved to South London when I was nine. I'm looking to find out what's causing a rise in black activism in Britain. They look at her and think she's a black little girl and she could be bad. And what it feels like to grow up black and British in 2016. So I guess one of the primary reasons I wanted to make this documentary was to highlight what it's like being black in the UK in 2016. Even at work, it happens on a daily basis. I'll have an email conversation or a phone conversation with someone, set up an interview, I'll go to the premises to meet them. They'll come downstairs to reception, look around, look around, go back upstairs, give me a call event. Nestor, are you sure you're in the right place, mate? We've just uh, been downstairs. And then you, like, there's a moment where you hear like almost in their head, oh, you're the black guy that was at reception. You're the BBC journalist. It's only when I'm saying this now, I realise, but it saddens me because I've sort of accepted it because it's the way things have always been. And I know lots of people listening to this might feel the same, but there's got to be a reason why now people want to take a stand and show the rest of the world how they're feeling. I'm not really interested in hearing the same stats about black people not being equal. Four times more likely to be stopped and searched, more likely to end up in prison. We've heard those numbers for years. What I really want to do is meet some of the people who've come out to protest and find out why they're here. These protesters obviously trying to make their point, causing as much disruption as possible. Just in front of me, traffic is at an absolute standstill. What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! One thing that's quite clear is that it's pretty hard to find out who's leading the march or if it does have uh, a route. At the minute, the march has now gone back where it came from and is now heading towards Southwark. It's pretty much trouble free, but not everyone is here to show support. We come across a couple who should have been on holiday but missed their flight because of a similar demonstration near Heathrow Airport yesterday. This is important, something's happening here and we want you to address this important. situation. Is that, but it shouldn't be met with resistance. No. It should be, yeah, that's true. We, we paid £3,000 on a holiday. We're no. pissed off with you. That person's dead forever. He, you know, they probably, what, they're dead forever. Their family, everyone's got to mourn them, everyone's got to, If you lot supported us before, we wouldn't have to do the airport. Eventually, by luck, we come across one of the organisers, 19-year-old student Benatti. It was to create as much, you know, um, awareness about, about Black Lives Matter to the people that are here with us today and to people, people that didn't even know um, the event was happening. And I feel like people who are saying that what we're doing isn't going to change anything, well, they're just trying to silence us and we will not be silenced. There's things that annoy me, like, about comments about my hair not being professional enough and I just feel like instead of and what, what I'd normally do would I'd change my hairstyle and to more of a suitable like European suitable hairstyle but like I've had enough of that and it used to like kind of make me feel down but I've just learned uh, more to just embrace it as the march goes on we come across this guy so what we've got is a gentleman here now being led away by the um, police who during the march actually came out of his shop uh, started shouting some abuse, telling people uh, to go back home and how, you know, they don't belong here. Born and grown here. Listen, 
I'm not talking about They can't you. keep coming here. They can't keep don't coming here. I heard this gentleman say with my listen, own ears that these listen, people listen, need to go back listen, home and stop listen, coming listen, here. My who, wife, who my are you wife is a to? Jamaican woman, yeah? I've got four I, half caste children. I can't even say half caste one. I've got to say mixed race. There's a thousand million immigrants coming. Right? They can't come the, from France. These people they are marching. Can't get to the white kids these people are marching for equality. Come if they don't feel equal come in society, come what do you want them to do? So after the march, I went to meet. I think there were six or seven friends for a drink, and they were all white. And then for the first time, I was actually looking at them and thinking, "What do they really think of me? And are they being honest?" Uh, and that was a little bit weird. And I also felt like. After speaking to so many people at the march, and now that I'm back at home, and this is genuine as well, like, it almost made me feel less black being at the march, or that I wasn't black enough, because maybe if I hadn't been working, I wouldn't have been there, or I'm certainly not as, when I say up for the fight, I mean up for marching. Obviously, I'm for equal rights, but I don't think that I would have got off my butt and went to a march. A few days later, and I've arranged to catch up with Craze24. Hey, is that Craze? Yep. How you doing, man? It's Nesta from the BBC. He tells me he's been pulled over countless times by police just because of the way he looks. How you doing, sir? How you, good? How you doing? How you doing? He was the one defending the protest to the couple who'd missed their holiday, but he's also using his music to try and change things. Now, when you hear me saying Black Lives Matter, like I ain't trying to say that all lives don't I'm trying to make you pay attention to the fact you always say You got my back and then you leave me on my own King, if you really thought the black lives mattered You wouldn't always try and criticise the quote Instead of hating on the message, you would focus on the evidence The facts that we recorded on our phones uh, Crazy, it's a lot cooler in here than it was the last time I bumped into you um, at the weekend w Why were you at the march? I was there because I believe in the issues that they was marching for. It was, it's come to a point where we have to start talking and addressing the issues before they go too far. Uh -huh. So it just come to that point where, and everyone's got to be responsible. So I felt responsible myself. Black Lives Matter started in America. Yeah. Uh, and lots of people can understand why Americans are marching on the street, but not why British people are marching on the streets. Um, Black Lives Matter everywhere. Like, I'm not saying that we just march for Black Lives Matter, but Black Lives Matter does matter everywhere in the world. In Britain, black people are still affected by injustice, so... There were some people who had come there because a previous march had disrupted their holiday. Yeah. Um, what, what did you get out of that conversation, if anything? I got that they was upset because they was inconvenienced. I felt that they was enlightened briefly by us talking, so I felt positive that I had touched someone or there's a chance that I potentially touched someone and made them see it from a different perspective. So, again, we're all humans and it's not about black lives mattering more than white lives or all lives or whatever. It's all about us just realising we're all humans. If something happens that's wrong, we need to come together and deal with it. Craze admits as a teenager he was in trouble with the law, which probably influenced his negative feelings towards the police. But what makes a 19-year-old from Manchester like Benatti, who's never been in trouble, organise a march in London? I guess the first place to start is the obvious. The hair is a little bit different than last time we spoke to you. Uh, what's new? Um, I got a box braids. This is what you call box braids. Um, got it done. It's like a protective hairstyle from a holiday. So I guess people's immediate thoughts would be, so you change your hair for a holiday, but not for an employer. For me, I can't keep up my hair for like too long because it'll start breaking. So this just like helps it grow and stuff. And obviously, me being on holiday and if it's getting wet every day, it's going to damage my natural hair. So this is that's the only reason that I put it on. Like, how would you measure the march? Like, whether it was a success or not? I would have liked to have like maybe thousands, thousands and thousands of people, but you know, hundreds of people is better than like no no people at all. And because our voices are not being heard. So the reason that we're out on the streets is because we want to stop you like from your daily activities, just to listen and feel our frustration. We're frustrated that we're even having to protest. Do you remember the first time in your life that you felt you was treated a certain way because of the color of your skin? And I just went um, just to look for a job and over the phone I got it and I 
um, got to the interview and the interviewee was fine and said, um, that's fine, but you know, your hair would have to be neat. You have to wear your hair in a neat style. And obviously I came with my hair out in my afro and I just went home. I was a bit disheartened, but I didn't really think of it like in depth, like, oh, it's because, it's because of this, but it was just kind of like, what am I supposed to do with my hair? Like, what way would be suitable for me to go into, into my workplace with hair that's suitable? I didn't do anything. I didn't bring, I didn't rise up the issue with anybody. I just said, it's on to the next one. I'll just carry on looking for more jobs. It's not that big of a deal. And that's kind of the mistake that I made for myself because it was a big, a, a, a bigger deal. Benazzi's frustration is about people not accepting her for her natural self. And it's that gut feeling of inequality or injustice that is uniting black people. But everyone has their individual fight. Why when we're learning about black history in schools does it start at slavery or civil rights movements? Why does my name stop me from getting a job? Why is it an issue for me to wear my hair natural? We never learn about the kings and queens, but when we learn about the Greeks and Romans, they go back hundreds of years. Why don't I see more people like myself on TV? Why isn't there more black people in top jobs? Why is it because of where I do rag and a tracksuit that I get looked on as if I'm a drug dealer? Why is it when people meet me do they automatically think that I'm black? I'm not, I'm mixed race. Why do people take gangster rap so literally because half of the time it's not even what you think it is? Why don't we have a lot of black role models in life? So why is it, because I drive a nice car, I get pulled over four times in one year? I question why we still don't have a black prime minister. In my school, there's not many black people, so everybody just looks at you differently, like, oh, she's the only black person. I'm always uh, unsure why it is people will assume I like hip-hop, or why it is people will assume I'm good at basketball. I feel like I'm just the same as everybody else. There's a lot of young black people out there, especially young black male, who lack aspiration in life. And the reason they do is because they've not got a role model to help and support them. To try and understand why now more than ever before, there's so much momentum around the movement, I've come to meet B. Hi, Nesta. Nesta. Thank you for coming to the Black oh, Blossoms silly, Exhibition. Welcome. I'm going to need this because this is when I pretend I know what I'm talking yeah, about and what is art is. She's told me to come along to her exhibition, which is about highlighting the voices of black women. And each layer is to show that black women are made up of multiple different layers. Oh. B's been going to Black Lives Matter events for several years. So B, um, talk to me then. What's your life like? in Britain today? I think life in Britain in 2016 as a black British woman is actually really interesting. Every single day I'm on social media talking about race and diversity and that's really important yeah. to me. And I think the reason why I mentioned that in 2016 and about social media is because 10 years ago there wasn't these platforms. So w what happened in your life then, why you wanted to get up and your voice to be heard? My daughter, I have a seven-year-old and um, I want her to be herself, unapologetically. I don't want her to have to assimilate to a culture that's never really going to be accepting of her. And naturally there'll be people saying that these marches did nothing but make people lose support for a movement they perhaps believed in, but all you did was cause disruption. For me, it's like the press and the impact that had now people know what Black Lives Matter is. People in Britain probably thought Black Lives Matter was just an American issue. Yeah. But when that happened, we were able then to insert our conversation into how Black Lives Matter is also important in the UK. The UK has a different fight and, and that's yeah. why you're out there. The global face of blackness is American. So therefore, when we do talk about anything to do with black people, we instantly think of America. We don't even think of Africa. And it's that allyship. Yeah, we're saying hands up, don't shoot, and we're not being shot in this country. But we want to show our brothers and sisters in America that we are standing with them. In this country, it's hands up, don't handcuff me. Hands up, I am not the suspect that you thought that robbed that car. My child's life is at jeopardy if she went to America. My child is a black little girl growing up in this country. Her life is also at jeopardy because people do not look at her and view her the same as a white little girl. They look at her and think she's a black little girl and she could be bad. Craze 24, Banati and B, three different experiences of life. The sort of problems they spoke to me about might not seem as dramatic as those in America. But don't forget, this is on top of the fact that 
black people are more likely to live in poverty. They're underrepresented in jobs like judges, police chiefs or MPs. And a black graduate earns 23% less than a white classmate with the same degree. Filming so far is interesting. I am surprised I'm at this point because when I started making this, I almost assumed what the story was and that I'll be able to easily highlight how black people in the UK were victims of a racist system. Uh, and I think there definitely is a large element of that. But I definitely uh, am starting to believe now that the people that are complaining, me included, we need to do more as individuals, as communities. Like, forget colour. If you keep telling people that they can't be something enough, slowly and surely they start to believe it. Very early on, I knew that I wanted to escape growing up on a council estate, never owning your own home. So I had a plan in place to do that. I'd go to school and I'd go to college and I'd study hard um, and then I'd take it from there. The only way we can change it, if we want more black teachers, more black politicians, more black police officers, if we're not qualifying for those positions in the first place, then it makes absolutely no sense. You say to people, so you want to be in television? They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, are you on YouTube? Are you making videos? Are you applying for internships? Ah, oh, no, nah, nah. Like, you, you can't just wait at the bottom of a ladder for something to fall to you. At least if you climbed halfway up that ladder and stuck up your hand, someone might have a better chance of actually reaching for you because they see you genuinely want to be on there. Most of the people that we've spoken to have been stumped by one question and it's, okay, so you've got a top politician or you know a, a leader right in front of you and you want things to change. What would you say to them? What would I say to Theresa May? Um, oh, I don't know how to answer that. No one knows the change they're asking for. It's like, that change can only be, I think, within yourself. Like, if I've met someone who says, every single time I go down the street in a do-rag and a tracksuit bombs, someone thinks I'm a drug dealer. And I say to them, well, don't wear the do-rag or the tracksuit bombs. It's like, oh my God, like, like, you want me to whiten up, but it's not whitening up. If you want to, people are not going to change their perceptions, but you, but you could change. So if, if you had to take off the tracksuit bottom and people judge you differently and you might get further in life, like what kind of a sacrifice is that? Right. My AI just changed. It just buzzed the front gate. I thank God you came. Today I'm meeting Jen. She's a filmmaker now, but studied law at uni. Hey. Yeah, How nice are you? you? Good I'm to good, see you. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. She's been on Black Lives Matter marches before, but knows firsthand the importance of getting a good education and equipping yourself with the right tools to deal with an unfair society. I was in a class of, I think, about there's 26 of us. Yeah. And there was at least one child from every major <laughs> ethnicity. But well, for the most part, it was a black school, mm -hmm. but they were all races represented, but we were all united by class yeah, because yeah. We're all, we were all children of immigrants, basically, yeah. you know? And you have a lot of kids who have this level of frustration mm -hmm. who grow up thinking, it's me. Yeah. There's something wrong with me. And as an individual and on a very kind of like mental kind of psychological level, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Um, if we say the system's not gonna change and I'm for, us changing as people, lots of people say, what, like, why should I have to change? Why should I have to perform? Uh, is that something you can relate to? It's the whole idea of like tracksuits and hoodies and wanting to dress down. And you know, some people can say, oh, you know, it's no different to um, a white man wearing a tracksuit and hoodie. You're both going to have assumptions about who you are based on what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is the fact that it's true. You know, there will be an assumption of this white person in terms of what they're wearing, and there will be an assumption on you in terms of what you're wearing. But as a black man, there's an added assumption yeah. on top of that general assumption. Mm -hmm. You've done everything you were told that you couldn't do. You're doing what I would consider, if not a dream job, certainly a job that you, you, you love. So, fight's over. Fight's just begun. So, as you can guess, I'm back at home about to make a dinner for a few specially invited guests. Uh, and part of the reason I'm doing this is because I'm a tiny bit confused. We have my good friend Adrian, who I play football with, have done for a few years and he works with disadvantaged children. Uh, we've got B, who you might remember from the art gallery. 
We have Brad, who is a friend of my girlfriend's and we've been out socially a few times as well. Uh, and me, obviously. Chef, host, you name it. Chicken to start, lamb for main. Let's hope there's not an argument for dessert over my new thought that it's better to change tact than wait for society to change. I think asking black think people to change themselves mm -hmm. is is a reach. We can't change because we haven't done anything wrong. We live in a society. Ch change doesn't always mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means a different approach. No, but I think we live in, I don't, I don't know though. I, like, no one is gonna, you're not gonna jump into the top of a company. You have to start somewhere. Yeah, but that, even that's if, my point. Yeah, I do think so. I'm not, I'm not gonna deny that you shouldn't start somewhere. Like if you wanna be, you know, if you wanna be part of the game, you get in the game. You don't, you don't sit on the sidewalk. I said the key thing here, and then this is where you come in, right? in terms of even though we're going to infiltrate the system and work, we still need white allies. A white allies, mm -hmm. right? Of course, no. Yeah, but we're not saying. saying, we're not no, saying but, 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 but do you guys? That, but uh, I'm, I'm this one. I'm, I'm putting some onus on where yeah. you may see something. You got the right to step in and say, yeah, "Hey, yeah. that's not so, right." You I know, totally like, agree with like, you. And but I think, I think there's, there's a, a generation. I think there's a generational difference. I really do. If I was in a position of power. It wouldn't bother me. It, like I do what think it bother bothers you? people to employ black people. I think, I think that's a generational thing, though. The night throws up a few surprises. Look, like you've never been stopped and searched. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 26. <laughs> Can you imagine? I know. I know. I, I know. It. I know boys who are under 15 that get searched daily. Talk soon goes back to the marches. I don't think we have to look at every single protest in like causing a change. You hope to get people to know what you're fighting for, mm -hmm. people know the issues, just really bringing it to the agenda. Yeah. So, I mean, normally with protest, there is a an end goal. So if it's just to bring to the highlight of the agenda, do you think people are unaware? That there's racism in Britain? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Who's, who's unaware? Um... I, I think there's a lot of people that will argue racism doesn't exist no more. So, yeah. As a black person, I know in a lot of other cultures or races, mm. I'm bottom of the pile. I speak to a friend and she's white. She she prefers black guys. But to know, she's turned around and said, my dad would never allow me to go out of a black person. Uh, Brad, is that a feeling you can relate to? Um, no, it's not. And I don't know, I just... <laughs> I've never felt that way. And that probably is because I've gone through a naive world where I've just kind of gone it, about my bit. And it's, it's your experience, man. It's, exactly. it's not naive, it's your reality. I don't don't yeah. you think like what you said about that girl, it goes back to the generational changes because I would never say that to my son or daughter. I think that that is ingrained in those people and I don't think that will change. With dinner over, there are some definite takeaways. It's an internal battle for me. Because there's like, no, some people, certain people need to be held accountable for their actions and their behaviour. But we got to play our role in this as well and create solutions. Uh, tonight for me has been huge. I mean, there's things that I've learned, which, as you said, white saviours, you do need an ally. And you said, like, and I, I was watching the news, I'll see the Black Lives Matter on there, but I wouldn't go on Facebook or post it. I wouldn't go on Instagram. And now that's kind of changed an attitude to think, yeah, you know, I should. And I should help and I should do something to help. Cheers. Here's Cheers. to dessert and washing up. <laughs> Benati's now back at uni and I wonder whether she still has the same drive she had in the summer. So when we spoke to you, you know, the plan was to definitely have uh, another march. What are you guys like uh, actively doing apart from like sharing stuff on Twitter? Um, we've not like set a date for any marches um, just, just of yet. Not, not that we're waiting for something like big to happen, but we just don't think that there's a, a particular reason just right now to, mm -hmm. to just go out on the streets and march. Yeah. Which might please a lot of people who were saying, you know, marching's never going to do anything. You guys were out in London because it was a nice day. Um, but, you know, do this for 90 days in a row in the rain, sleet and snow, yeah. and I guarantee you wouldn't be there. True. I mean, I mean that would definitely, like, um, make a big statement like, if, if we did it, like, carried on every day. But um, I personally couldn't do that. Not right now, anyway. Mm -hmm. As filming comes to an end, I'm back where my life in the UK started. So we're back in um, South East London. This is the estate where I grew up on. Got 
lots of new buildings. Obviously, some of the old stuff is still here as well. Um, and I definitely say some of the best memories of my life uh, were made here. And this is where my attitude towards life in general, friendships, relationships, was definitely formed on, on this estate. I lived there for what, maybe 15 years? That's where I met this man. Known him for over what, 20 years in general? Yeah. Uh, do you remember over there playing when you could jump over this easily? <laughs> and it, I keep on telling people like the craziest thing about growing up in a place like this is so many people live here that there were so many friends, friends for you to have, you don't even don't need, need more. New friends, yeah. I know lots of people not council estate, but it gives you a certain character and a certain closeness and affinity to people, man. The only thing that was bad is, and I've got no shame in admitting it, let's say that there was 10 of us in total. Mm. I, I think me and you are probably the only ones who weren't in trouble with the law every week or weren't mm. going to prison uh, and going to jail. What, what, what made you stay away from, from, from that side of things then? Well, everyone, dips in and dips out, but um, I just looked at the bigger picture, you know, and also my home mm -hmm. played a big part, you All know, right. mum. Your foundation, yeah? Yeah, mum, sisters, they were, they were doing well, so you didn't want to drag everyone else down. Like, did you feel the system was against you and it wasn't going to change, so you had to give yourself the skills? Maybe for the poor working class, mm -hmm. yeah, it's harder, but that's genuine, that'd be why black, Indian, Chinese, mm -hmm. yeah, it's harder um, than if I was coming from a middle class family. It's mindset, so I never really tried to play the race card. I tried my best. It's too easy. It's because, it's because I'm black, white, I can't get that job. No, mm -hmm. it's because you didn't read the right thing to the interview. It's simple, you know what I mean? You didn't, you didn't do your research beforehand, you know? I've got a lot of, I don't like even talking <laughs> about race, but I've got a lot of black friends that do quite well, but that's because I broadened my horizon, went to university, met friends at university, then the places I now go, I meet a certain level of people, you know. Um, so uh, it's not a race thing because I've got black friends that I do very well, you know what I mean? My thing is, it's, it's, it's building blocks. Mm. Me and you grew up on a council estate, so my one dream is that, and there's nothing wrong with council estates, mm. but my one thing is, I want to leave my son a home so that that's mm. one less thing he's got to worry about. My thing is, my children have to go to private school. Like, I, I teach, yeah? Mm -hmm. So in, in school, I'm saying, how old are you going to live for? Till you're 80. All right. So you want to be a gangster. Um, more than likely, between the age of 16 and 20, you'll go to jail, yeah? You get in trouble a numerous amount of times, and that's going to shape your life mm -hmm. for the other 60 years. Mm -hmm. Look at the bigger picture. No, but sir, I need this, I need that. I need, mm -hmm. Like, this is what my brother does. This is what my uncle does. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but you don't need to do that. Left. <laughs> Come on. Ah! I couldn't leave here without saying hello to someone special. So we're just off to see my nan who still lives on this estate. Uh, hopefully she's in. I want... <laughs> it's almost like you knew I was coming. How you doing? Come give me a hug. You all right? Would, would you never get you to fix the hair before we yeah. ring? When I started making this film, it was to answer a simple question. Why are black people in the UK marching? The answer is a simple one. It's, it's that feeling. Most, if not all the black people I've spoken to can relate to. The feeling you get when you don't feel equal. All right, Nan, I'll see you later, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bye. I promise I'll one come more. tomorrow. Uh. Why now? Because to be honest, from the time I arrived in the UK to my treatment now, nothing has changed. I think the only difference is with the power of the Black Lives Matters movement, people are treating it like a brand. It's something to, to, to jump on. I describe it like it's a bus heading towards a journey. And at the minute, the bus is traveling as fast as it's probably ever going to travel. So why not jump on to get to your destination? So after the dinner party at my house the other day, I was thinking about it all night. And I woke up with a thought, bear with me, this is going somewhere. In the old days, houses were badly built so rats could come inside. But over time, we've reinforced our houses and they're built better so rats no longer come inside. And you can't change the rats. They'll exist and they'll do what they want. But you can barricade your house yourself so that the rats don't affect you. 
I guess to me racism is the same. You can't eliminate it right now, but you can barricade yourself so that it no longer affects you in the same way it did before. So for me, the journey I've been on is very real because back at the march in Southwark, I just wanted to hold hands with all the other black people and take a stand about injustice. And I don't want to play down those struggles because they're real and it's what black people face every day. But my opinion has definitely changed uh, throughout making this film. It daps. It was play one touch. Because the thing for me is, if we want to escape this cycle and we don't want this for our children or our children's children, should we as black people stop waiting for a savior, stop waiting for other people to help us, stop waiting for the system to help us and, and take more responsibility. Because if we do that, then the rats of racism, they shouldn't really be able to affect us, should they?